Welcome back to the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Doc Jen. And I'm Dr. Dom. And today we're going to be talking about TENS units, something that we've been asked about a lot because I think they're pretty commonly used. And so we want to help to understand what exactly it is, when it's best for, and what the research is currently saying. Now, before we go more into TENS or transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, we want to make sure that you subscribe because we have so many more podcasts, not only on exactly what units are, tools, things that help your body, but exercises that help your body weekly. We come out with so many videos that could really help. So I don't want you to miss out. Just hit that subscribe, drop any comments below. If something pops up that you're like, well, I have a little bit more questions about this or what about this? We create videos based on what you're asking. So definitely drop them in the comments below. Transcutaneous electric nerve stimulation. And they're those little devices. You can have devices that you use in home mm -hmm. or you might have them used in an office, whether that's with an athletic trainer, a physical therapist, a chiropractor. I've seen an them use acupuncturist. I've seen them used all over the place. What exactly are they doing? When might they be effective? Yeah, I mean, they're essentially using electrodes that are placed on the skin or again, in an acupuncture setting, they're placed on they attach them the, to needle. the needle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're sending electrical currents in into our bodies and into our nerves to help to essentially decrease pain. That's what we're trying yeah. to do with TENS units. Yeah, and there are both sensory and motor applications. So mm -hmm. like in the sensory application, we tend to be trying to access pain or mm -hmm. they can be used when people have neurologic issues and they might not feel as well in a certain area. You can use TENS to kind of try and reinvigorate the sensory nerves in those areas. There are also applications where they try lining them up with the motor point of the muscle to actually stimulate muscle contraction. Mm -hmm. Those are always fun units in the physical therapy labs. Mm -hmm. Did you guys do that where you... And MES. Yeah, where you'd specifically try and target the motor unit where the muscles yeah. most active and then you crank it up and you get your bicep like fully contracting which are more used like I say you've had a knee surgery or something you want to understand yep. you want to feel how to use that quad again that's most commonly used in physical therapy settings I would say for yeah. the more of the motor or again with people who've had spinal cord injuries yeah. trying to get yeah. different muscles activating and coming back to life essentially but most people know of these things being used in okay. the setting of pain. Mm -hmm. And essentially how these things work uh, is through this gating of pain. Mm -hmm. There's this gating effect where when we send the electrical stimulation into that area that someone's feeling pain, our nerves, they're called our afferent nerves that go back up to our brain, they sense the electrical stimulation, send the signal up to the brain and say, hey, we're feeling this little tingle down in that area. And those nerves transmit faster than the nerves that transmit our pain signals. So essentially our brain receives this message first, then the pain signal shows up at the brain and the brain's like, no, nope, I already know what I'm feeling in that area, get lost. And so we get this like almost immediate analgesic effect because the signals from the electrical stimulation kind of override or surpass the pain signals. At least that's the theory behind it. Exactly. And so that's why it is so it can be so effective in that short term, especially when you're just feeling that pain or you want that pain to kind of reduce so that you can go into a little bit more movement based therapy. But we want to look at also what does the research say around TENS unit? How, how effective, effective it is? Yeah, Yeah. exactly. How effective is it really, especially when we're comparing it to other therapies? Actually, and I do just want to say that there are some contraindications as to when you should use this really pacemaker epilepsy and pregnancy is kind of like a catch-all like just be careful when you're using these units however I will talk about how it is it can be effective during labor and I think in many settings I would recommend doing this first with a professional yeah. in general especially if you're trying to do it surrounding some sort of specific diagnosis that you have mm -hmm. especially if that diagnosis is nerve related or if it's been injury due to major trauma even with chronic type pains you know there's varying research on how effective it can be based on what type of chronic or persistent pain issue you're having so I always like to recommend do it with a professional first so that they can then guide you on how to use it effectively in your home. And the research that we ended up finding surrounding TENS units and their effectiveness, we'll go through a few different studies that we kind of got an overview on and give some of our takeaways from that because, well, you'll see, like there's always varying results. There's some contradicting results from different studies. So one of the first studies that we kind of looked through was this 2018 study, I think was done with people who had 
chronic or persistent low back pain yeah, symptoms. Back pain. And it was kind of funny to me because they framed this study as being TENS versus physiotherapy. Yeah, that's an issue for me right there. I know, which, so <laughs> when we looked into the methods a little more, we realized that the physiotherapy group was just receiving infrared and ultrasound therapy, which is why we're like, okay, why would you call it phys physiotherapy then? Because many physiotherapists also use TENS. Physiotherapists also use exercise, exercise. and manual <laughs> therapies and all sorts of other different things. So yeah. we're like, why? I call it physiotherapy when you're just doing infrared and ultrasound. This should actually be <laughs> TENS versus infrared and ultrasound. And if you're going to physiotherapy who's only doing ultrasound and infrared, yes. we got an issue. Go to a different physical therapist. Yeah. Basically, the results showed that the people who got TENS had greater pain reduction scores than the people who got the infrared light therapy and ultrasound therapy. And they did follow-ups after 12 weeks and one 12, year, mm -hmm. uh, 12 months. And the, the results were still better in the TENS group. It gives us an interesting insight to see how it performed better than ultrasound and infrared, but that's it. <laughs> then we looked at a 2017 study, and this one is really comparing three different groups using TENS. So there was a TENS and exercise group, there is just a TENS group and there is just an exercise group. Mm -hmm. What we ultimately saw from the results is that the TENS and exercise group had better results in decreasing pain than just the tens and just the exercise. However, bigger than just the exercise, the tens actually alone decreased pain a little bit more than just the exercise. But again, we're looking at short term. So mm -hmm. usually when we're talking about exercise, and this is something we've talked about a lot, you need to continue to do it. It's all about consistency to really see these long term changes and how you yeah. ultimately are going to feel. So there's that limitation, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't know exactly what exercises they were doing. So yes, tens and exercise together always going to be better we've said this before passive treatments combined with exercise can go really good hand in hand and just knowing what tens does based on getting that short-term reduction in pain being able to then do a little bit more exercise, we can see how that ultimately can help. There was another 2022 study that we took a look at that compared TENS to back exercises. Again, exactly what the back exercises are is a little unclear, but this one showed that TENS did perform better at pain reduction in the short term, but was not shown to be as effective for long-term reduction in pain symptoms. We just wanna go over 2010 review. This one was actually pretty interesting because it actually showed that if you use the TENS unit versus a sham unit. Which is basically just putting pads on somebody and turning on the device and saying that, okay, that you're, getting, doing the same thing. you're getting the electrical stimulation now. It made no difference. Yeah. No difference in the reduction of pain. And we've seen this for a lot of other types of treatments like ultrasound. There are studies that show sham ultrasound with the ultrasound on versus just rubbing the area mm -hmm. with the gel and saying, yep, you're getting the ultrasound treatment. A lot of these studies will show that there's not a significant difference between the two, which points out a very powerful phenomenon that is the placebo phenomenon, where doing any treatment and going in and telling somebody that, yes, this is going to help you can have a pretty significant impact for a large number of people, even if there's no research or anything backing it. I call it my peanut butter <laughs> experiment, <laughs> yeah. where if you just rub peanut butter on someone's knee or shoulder and tell them, yep, this is going to help your knee or your shoulder feel better. It might help 33 to 66% of people feel better. I mean, belief, education, and confidence in your provider goes a long way in yeah. how you're ultimately going to feel. And that's why it's hard with research alone to point out anything because it, what we believe is going to help is ultimately what usually is gonna help the treatment. I remember even watching this episode, I think it was like on Dr. Oz and they were going through physical therapy treatments and they were talking about ultrasound, they were talking about TENS, they were talking about all these things. And so it's like, this is what we've believed to be physical therapy and physiotherapy, which is unfortunate. And so a lot of times you wanna believe that these are the treatments that are gonna help me. And that's what I've been told from so many people as well. I remember when I first went off to kind of step away from the clinic and, and start to do my own thing, I'd get people, well, do you do those you know, electrical stimulation thingies? And do you have like, you know, they were asking me for some of these devices because that's what we believe is really yeah. gonna be the thing that's gonna help me. And though, again, we can see that it can create some short-term change, Long-term, what is that gonna do within your body? We have to create long-term change actively, not just passively. And that's mm -hmm. ultimately like <laughs> what we really believe here on the Optimal Body Podcast. Yes, there's a lot more research that would need to be done for us to actually determine what TENS by itself can do for you. Yeah. But our recommendation is that you really shouldn't just use TENS by itself and rely on that to 
fix anything. I do believe that this can be helpful and this can be effective, especially if it gets you over that hump to at least start the exercise or you've yeah. been feeling like you can't even get there. You know, like this can be an effective tool to be able to use, but know that it's a tool and it's not the fix. I think that's what's important. Thanks for tuning in to another episode from the Optimal Body Podcast. We hope you learned something. We hope you learned how TENS might play a role in your journey, whether it's for pain or movement or restrictions that you're feeling in your body. Comment below if you learned something. Comment below if you still have questions. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you take off. <laughs>